This is the text of the hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Uh, it's my belief not only is this the worst hymn in the English language, but it's also one of the shittest things ever written by anyone in any language ever. Um, <laughs> I'm going to explain why that is now, right? This is the chorus up here, which you sing once at the start of the hymn, and then a further seven times during it. <laughs> and it's my belief you don't need to do that. I think you can get the idea of what the hymn's about just from reading that through once, I think, right? So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to read it through once. I want you to see if you can understand what the hymn's saying. <laughs> Look out for key words, all right? <laughs> Here's how it goes. All things bright and beautiful. All creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful. The Lord God made them all. The key word is all there. <laughs> All those things have been made by God. That's what it's saying. All, you know, it's in, easy to understand. <laughs> You'd have to be stupid not to read that through once. And under, it is totally crystal clear. He made them all. So given how clear that is, why is it necessary for the hymn writer to go on and give a further 19 specific examples <laughs> of some of the individual things God's made in case when you read that through he made them all you didn't understand what it meant you thought it meant he's made them all but not these ones here <laughs> they're special, they have to be individually accounted for First verse points out God made each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, their glowing colours and their tiny wings. So four more things there, including a bird. <laughs> Which you don't need to be told he's made a bird, because you've just been told he made all things there. Two lines, and that covers a bird, surely. <laughs> the only situation you'd need to be told he'd made a bird, right? if you'd just been told he made all things. So if you'd read that first bit through, understood what it meant, had some kind of brain hemorrhage, <laughs> forgotten everything you'd ever known, <laughs> looked up in the sky, seen a bird and gone, blow me tight, a bird, who could have made that? Because <laughs> that is covered then. I like to think of it in mathematical terms here, where... <laughs> Set A is all things, <laughs> set B is birds, set B is a very clear subset of set A. <laughs> In fact, I would go so far as to say this needlessly overcomplicates a very simple idea. Because <laughs> basically you're either a thing, in which case you're in set A, or you don't exist, right? <laughs> There's no point trying to get round it, trying to trick God trying to think of a thing you think he might not ever have thought of. <laughs> I go, I just thought of a lamb with a wasp's feet. <laughs> and it's Spanish. <laughs> Does he go, is it a thing? You go, yeah, he goes, set A, I win. <laughs> Two lines later, he made their tiny wings which I think is doubly pointless under the circumstances, right? Because not only is wings covered by all things, it's covered by birds as well, isn't it? Set C. Set A, all things, set B, birds, set C, wings, set C being a subset of both set B and set A there. <laughs> you don't need to be told he made wings. Unless maybe you'd seen some wings on their own somewhere, got a bit confused. <laughs> maybe in a Kentucky Fried Chicken shop late at night. <laughs> the only way to make any sense of this, right, is to assume the whole thing is an elaborate parody of the stupidity of a literal biblical creation idea, right? And the argument for that <laughs> is the last verse, which goes, He gave us eyes to see them, and lips that we might tell. How great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. Well, being a bit of an understatement, I think, given the enormity of this task. <laughs> so next time you're asked to sing this, just take along one of these and go, it's this, 
can we go home now? 